Hey, my name's Jake. This is my little homie Louie, and this is our 1986 uh, Ford Getaway van. When I first got it, it was pretty much original, but I've just done like some cosmetic adjustments to it. For the water system, we, I just have a little like 15 liter jug. It's just a little pump that you twist on there after you refill the water. And that works good enough. And I just go and refill that like maybe every week or so. For the kitchen, I'm just using like an old Coleman Triton camper stove. And I just buy these little bottles. That works great. I find cooking in here is really easy because I have the fan. Fan actually, I don't even run it. I just leave it cracked open and I've never had an issue with anything to do with propane. When I first moved into the van, like before I had bit lived in here, I thought that I needed a sink and a, to be able to do dishes in here, obviously, because I'm going to be living in here. But I found that I actually like took the time to install a sink and it's, this actually slides up. I didn't actually like anticipate thing, but if you look, I have some dishes in there and there's a full sink and actually a storage compartment and everything. It wasn't feasible. So it's one of those things, it's like, don't go above and beyond and do everything if you don't actually need it. You're, you're gonna find out once you move into the van how much you need to do. So what I do for my dishes and stuff, um, it, since it's just me, maybe like a five days worth of dishes, I'll put them in like a waterproof bag that I have, like a backpack, doesn't look like there's dishes in it. I'll walk into like a Walmart, they have like a really big handicap washrooms, beautiful washrooms. I'll use the sink in there, put like top clean towels down for to dry the dishes and stuff, and I'll spend maybe 10 minutes do my dishes in there, carry them back out, put them away. It's just way easier than having to lift this up. And it go, you go through a lot of water and with a little jug like that, it's just not worth it. So that's what I do for dishes. So up here, I just kind of keep like basic stuff. I have like my cleaning stuff, garbage bags. Um, I have my little vacuum for the van. And then I just keep my bag of gym stuff in here. This is where I keep like my bowls, plates. I definitely bought way too many for the van and I brought tons when I only probably needed five. This is where I just keep my mugs, cups and stuff like that. Over here is where I usually keep all the pans and stuff that I cook with. And just a few soup bowls in the end one. I left the fridge for storage. So with these old vans, I just like too late realized that it only really worked when you have it plugged in at a campsite because the way they were designed in the eighties. I just kind of use it and I just keep all my like dry like foods in there that I eat. Got like bread, fruit, oatmeal and stuff. And then I just use my cooler over here for anything like eggs, milk, stuff like that. For power, I didn't really want to spend tons of money on solar and get into like, like batteries and stuff. I just don't know enough about that. So I was like, I just need something quick, something that works. So this is the Explorer 500. I'm gonna power my lights off of it that are around the whole van here. Just some simple pot lights off of Amazon. It has all the USB ports. So I charge my phone on that and I, can charge my phone probably over 50 times with, without before it even gets to the point where I have to recharge it. The way I recharge the battery is you can do it with a wall plug that will charge in eight and a half hours or eight hours, something like that. Um, but when we're driving like a long distance and stuff like that, I just use the 12 volt connector to the cigarette lighter and I think it's 14 hours on that. But it, yeah, so it will charge it even back to 70%. And by the time I'm doing that again, it's uh, more than enough. Never really runs out for heat. I decided to go with the Olympian Wave 3. I was going to like go with the Mr. Buddy heater, but I read too many like reviews about people having like, toxic levels of CO2 in their van and stuff like that, or uh, carbon monoxide. So I decided to try this out, and when I first moved into the van, I was really nervous about it because everyone's like, don't put propane in your van. It's going to be horrible. You're going to die. But I just kind of would leave it on during the day, crack the window, crack the roof end of it and like it was safe. So for the first two or three weeks, that's what I did. Now I've gotten to the point where I just leave it on all night, running on low. As long as my windows are cracked, I feel safe with it. And mm -hmm. I've never had an issue. I keep my carbon monoxide detector right up here and I've never had a reading above zero the whole time that I've been in here. Above the bed here, I just keep, uh, this is like some old bins or like just some little crates. I just keep all my basic stuff up there. Uh, all my hats that I have too many of. Every time I go to a thrift store, I end up buying a new one. Shoes, cooking utensils, um, this is where I keep all my tea, and then just books that I'm like either read or reading. Um, for the bed, underneath is all the storage. So it's kind of a pain in the ass or it's kind of annoying because I have to like lift the pieces of foam up 
to get anything out that's under there. So I just keep like winter jackets, stuff that I'm not gonna wear that much under there. So it's a lot easier. You can climb over this part and actually sit in one of the storage areas. And there is a table that pops up. I thought I was gonna be able to use it a ton, but it's just not feasible with the size of my bed. When I drove out here, it was me and my cousin. Actually, we were both of us. So I had this pulled out. He was living up here full time for maybe three weeks and I was down here. So there's no way I was ever using the table. So I'm sure one day I'll be able to use it, but for now it just stays as storage. So if you see under the foam, there's these compartments and that's where all the storage bins are. There's storage there. And I think there's six of them all the way around the bed. For my jackets in the back, I needed a space to get to my jackets, sweaters, hoodies, and stuff like that. But like I said, I didn't want to have to dig under my mattress every single time. So I bought it like a cheap little rack from a home store. I think it was $10 put it in and then it just works perfectly for my jackets. I can slide it over. It doesn't take up too much space. So on the door here, I just have a bin. This is just for Louis stuff. This is toys and his jacket, his leash and stuff. And then this one I just uh, use for garbage. Okay, so in the back of the van, um, this is where I keep just my skateboard. Like I was talking about before, my snowboard. It, if you look, it runs all the way into one of the storage compartments. I keep like my boots. This is this here is just my guitar. That slides all the way in keep a space heater if I'm ever able to find an outlet in places that are like really cold. When I bought the van, it was definitely leaking. It was, uh, it had leaks in this window. If you can see, it doesn't look the greatest, but I just used like sealant to my best abilities there and stopped the leaks from coming in on the top because that's where like I was keeping my clothes and my cousin was living up there. So he was getting wet at some point. So I sealed that off. I still find that water does run down here because it collects in here and runs down the door. You can kind of see it's like affecting the old floor. So. In the future, I plan to just rip this out, maybe make the bed more like your setup, something that's more like seating that can slide into a bed at night. So when I got the van, I like I said, I just wanted to like get in and kind of go quickly. I didn't have a ton of time to convert it. So I actually went with like a, it's like a wallpaper. And if you look, it's on the backsplash of the kitchen as well. The same um, wallpaper. I didn't think it would hold up, but with water, him, his water spilling and dirt and mud and stuff, it's been fine. So with the interior, I kind of want to make it like, feel like home, like a homey little space where I didn't feel like I was out on my own sleeping in a neighborhood. I kind of wanted to feel like I was in my bedroom. So that's why I went with like just vintage stuff. A lot of the things I already had, like I said, the book of maps I had, um, the pins I picked up from the thrift store before I had the van and just little things that I added like, comfortable, the mattress. I didn't want to be uncomfortable because I'm sleeping in it all the time. I just wanted to make it feel like my own space, not like I was driving someone else's van around. I was a full-time nursing student and the whole time I was about to graduate, I kind of was thinking to myself, like, I don't know if I want to do this for sure. I don't want to commit to a full-time job, like build a pension and stuff like that yet. So what can I do to kind of get out there and be able to like explore? And I've never been out of farthest I was was maybe four hours north of Toronto so yeah I just wanted to get out and see if I could do it to be honest I wasn't really sure so I just bought the van I didn't even sleep in it before I left and I just my first night in the van was my first day on the road and what are some of the benefits that you found with this lifestyle well first thing I think you save a lot of money I find that I was able to pay off a bit of school debt like living in a van your only your expenses instantly go from rent groceries car insurance on another vehicle um, gas costs, especially in the city all the time, to literally only paying insurance and gas costs when you're driving around. If you're in a more stationary lifestyle, like where I was in Vancouver, kind of parking in the same neighborhoods all the time, I was spending little to no money on gas because I was in one area for work. And that may help you save a lot more money that you can put towards things like going and seeing, experiencing things, or uh, paying off school debt simple things like that. It's just a lot more free. You can move around all the time. You're not stuck in one place. You know, you get these people who buy like these $5 million condos in Vancouver for the same view every single day. And you can park downstairs in front of that condo and move the next day. So that's like one of the major benefits is being able to change your view all the time. And I think you learn a lot. It just taught me how to be on my own and kind of disconnect from looking at a phone screen all the time. I found myself like constantly looking through Instagram or killing time looking at my phone and and now, like, even if I can find Wi-Fi, I'll try and park away from it. So I, like, do things like read or write or paint and just do, like, simple things that I actually am, like, passionate about but I don't ever put before my phone or TV. Living in the van, I actually was lucky enough to find a job where I was working driving all day. 
So I was in a p position where I could come back to the van and check on my dog, make sure he was okay, take him for walks, give him food, make sure he's all right. Where I, which was like, I was really fortunate because a lot of people have a nine to five or a job where they can't check on them. So that's one thing where if you have an animal in your van, it definitely changes things more than just having yourself. Um, as far as work goes, I found that it was very similar to working and just coming home at night, but like instead of coming home being exhausted and just going to sleep, I would come home and drive the van somewhere else and go do stuff. Maybe go on a hike. Some of the challenges to living in a van are definitely the washroom. I mean, I'm not in a big $100,000 sprinter. I don't have a shower. I don't have a toilet that I can just use whenever I need to. Um, so, but they're always around that. So what I do is I have a Canada-wide gym membership. I use Fit for Less and Good Life to shower whenever I need to. And as far as going to the washroom goes, like realistically, you end up sometimes you got to shit in a grocery bag. Sometimes you got to pee in a bottle. Like that's just the way it works. I think like a lot of things are glorified on YouTube, Instagram, stuff like that. And nobody, everyone thinks, oh, it looks so great. But there are downsides like that. Like you, it, that's the reality of it, you know? But like I said before, there's as much as like you might shit in a grocery bag and piss in a bottle, but that's probably some of the only downsides to living in a van. One thing I was worried a lot about was break-ins, people not, especially with an older van, I think it's like, people think they could hotwire it easier or they could definitely, like they know there's like not, probably not a major security system on that van. So those things I think about, so I was a little bit cautious when finding parking, stuff like that, but it just goes away. Like the longer you're in the van, you just don't think about that stuff anymore. You just become comfortable. My advice to anyone who is like considering getting a van, but they don't really know where to start or if it's gonna be okay, is just kind of like try it. If you have a Honda Civic, flatten the back seats, go sleep in it for the weekend, go camping with your friends. A lot of people get set on that. I need this van to go out and live in it. Even myself, I thought I needed a high roof, which is nice. It's nice that I have a high roof. It's great, I can stand up and cook, but I would have been totally fine in a minivan, a Honda Odyssey. I could have been in an old Toyota van. I would have been fine. I could have done a car. It wouldn't have been as great, but I could definitely could have done it. I would suggest just try it. And like, you can like speak things into existence, you know? You start writing things out and start checking them off one by one. Cause eight months ago, I was like watching your channel, Chrome's channel, Dylan McGaster and stuff like that. I was like, man, that's crazy. Like those guys are just killing it. And now I'm here doing a van tour with you, living in my van full time. So it's totally doable. You just have to want it bad enough and like be willing to put the work in to go actually like get out there and do it. I would recommend this lifestyle most to people who just really aren't sure like what or what they want to be or what they want to do yet. If you're someone who is maybe just finished school or you just kind of don't want to get like into a mold that everyone else is doing and you enjoy being outside, this is the perfect thing to do. It's like the way to, the way it is and like the freedom that you have to kind of just go. And especially if you're on your own, you don't have to rely on someone else's schedule or worrying about someone else's well-being. It's just you. I feel like just try it. And what's the worst that could happen? If you hate it, sell your van, right? Like try it, sleep in it for a week. If you hate it, ditch the van, sell it, sell it to someone else. You had to sum up, what would your personal philosophy on life be? I really didn't know because watching your old videos, I always saw you ask this question and I always thought like, what am I going to say when this guy asked me this? So I feel like I kind of have two. Um, like I said before, like you really can just speak things into existence. Me and my brother and my friends used to just talk about this lifestyle. Like, oh man, I really want to live in a van. It looks great. YouTube makes it look awesome. Like I really want to try it, but you just have to be, like I said, be willing to like, I just find for me personally, writing things down, like steps and just checking things off to make sure that you can get things done. Um, and my second thing that I really only learned since from being out here, I've only been in the van five months now. And I actually wrote the quote on my fridge there. It's happiness is only real when shared. It's from the Into the Wild. Christopher McCandless wrote that on like the bus when he passed away, before he passed away. And like being out here is great. I actually love being on my own and it's amazing, but Whenever I'm doing an amazing thing, like I was on the ferry and I saw a humpback whale yesterday, and, or I'm down at the beach and I'm cooking my food. I just like, can't help but wish that someone that I like loved or cared about was there with me to like experience it. Alone, it's great, it's fine. I can tell people about it or I can videotape it or whatever, but I don't think that compares to like sharing a certain experience with someone who you genuinely care about.
I think people who are really nervous about people knocking, nervous about, there's so many things to be nervous about, someone breaking in, just be smart. Don't like, you can park in residential areas. Don't go park in front of a expensive condominium and blare music all night. You're asking to have trouble. Or simple things like the propane heater. Like you can listen to a million people tell you that it's unsafe, that you're gonna die in your van. You're gonna, it's gonna be like, you're gonna get sick. But you're not really gonna know until you just go try it. That's what I did and it's never given me an issue. There's a lot of things like that that I find like one person's opinion is not always gonna be yours. Hey everybody, it's Forrest the Filmmaker. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Alternative Dwellings. If you want to see more, playlists are popping up right now where you can watch all of our archived episodes. Or if you want to see new ones, make sure to subscribe because they premiere at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every single Monday. Hope to see you guys there.